In this episode, we talk a new iPhone 7 rumor, which I've been re avoiding reporting on in the first place, a potential Google Chrome OS replacement, and PS4 finally catching up with the times. All that and more in this week's episode of Tech Tuesday. Let's get into it. As you guys know, my name is Adam Marie plus Fox, and I'm continuing to try to experiment with the format of Tech Tuesday here to make it both convenient for me to put together as well as more watchable for you. So I've moved back to the normal studio setup. I've put up some cool sound foam. I've managed to keep it off camera, thankfully, and trying to make this setup work for me because it's a lot easier to record videos as long as I can get the screen and myself going at the same time. So as always, leave me feedback in the comments below with what you think about the format and the setup and things like that. And I will continue to adjust accordingly. So this week we've got some weird, like, usually there's more of a theme to, like, the group of news on the whole that I'm talking about, and there isn't really one here this week. So, we're just gonna jump right in at the top here, and again, full article up on TetraNinja.com, link will be in the description below, go check it out, read along with me if you'd like. I know my recording of this side of the screen isn't always great, but... On Google Source and GitHub, Google has started putting up the source code for a new operating system that they're working on called Fuchsia. And I honestly didn't realize Fuchsia was spelled this way, but pink plus purple equals Fuchsia, a new operating system. We don't have any official confirmation as to what this is, but The Verge took a look at it and was speculating, and it looks like they're taking the basics of Android and Chrome OS and kind of putting them together, and the operating system is targeting to work on both smartphones and computers. However, it's not based on the Linux kernel like Android and Chrome OS was. Instead, they're basically building their own kernel to a degree, but it's not Linux based. And so if they're using it to kind of unify Android and Chrome OS, which has been what they've kind of been moving towards recently, they're doing it by rehauling the infrastructure altogether, which is kind of an interesting move, but one I would like to see pan out because no one's really pulled off the one operating system to rule them all kind of ecosystem yet. Windows is really trying to push that with the new Windows 10 updates, but Windows Phone itself died basically, so I'm not sure how successful that endeavor will be in terms of uh, conquering the smartphone market side of things, but don't know a whole lot about it yet And I'm not experienced enough with the code to like dive in and find out some nitty-gritty details about what's going on in The code, but it's still pretty interesting to see that they're working on it And I'm excited to see what they do when they actually announce it All right, so I've avoided talking about iPhone 7 rumors for a good reason because there's rumors They're, they're rumors. They're not verified I have no way of verifying them, and if there's one thing I learned throughout my years of studying at college and journalism is fact check your information before you post it online, dummy. And while everyone likes to overhype the $800 smartphone market for iPhones and talk about all the nitty gritty rumors and the things that they hate and love about it, as if they love spending that much money on the same phone every year. I'm not interested in all that. However, one of the most recent rumors has interested me and they've had a lot of new internal documentation from Apple suggesting that there's some credibility to all this. So I'm, I, what we should be finding out on September 7th, Apple typically runs their events on uh, Thursdays and this is a Wednesday or yeah, I believe a Wednesday, but it's being suggested that because Labor Day is right around there that they're doing it on Wednesday. It didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but potentially the Apple event will be on September 7th, and then the release date was going to be like September 14th or 21st or something for the iPhone 7. But what they're suggesting is that they're making it actually waterproof, and the removal of the headphone jack may have actually played a role in that move by Apple, which is pretty good because it's an expensive phone and I'm really sick of it existing as being so expensive and being so easy to break or ruin. This will make the lives of those who repair Apple iPhones for a living very difficult, and I'm only like relatively sensitive to that information because I watched the YouTube channel by the gentleman, Lewis Rossman, who f cares very deeply about the Right to Repair Act and all that jazz, and Apple does a lot to basically prevent them from being, to repair, being able to repair their devices, and so, this is yet another move which will completely seal up their phone and prevent people from working on it for the most part. So that kind of sucks, but we will find out soon so people can stop foaming at the mouth every time someone's like, headphone jack or no headphone jack? <laughs> PlayStation 4 is getting folders and organizational tools as well as some UI tweaks for their games and apps and the overall operating system to make it more like a real operating system. Two years later, finally. 
It's so weird. PS3 had a decent, in my opinion, a lot of people hated it, but PS3 had a decent menu system, in my opinion. Didn't It allowed for a lot more organization than the PS4 did, and then the PS4 came out, and they're just like, let's just put every single game icon you or app icon that you could ever have in just one giant horizontal list, or either have you remove them and hide them in the app drawer or the library. Because that makes sense, because that doesn't lag or be able to like restrict your navigation. They finally caught on and are adding folders to organize your games. They're making UI tweaks. They're making the share menu and the quick options menu not take up the full screen anymore, which is great because I'm tired of like screwing up in video games because I want to quickly record a clip, but the share menu takes forever to pull up and it's full screen. So I'd have no clue what's going on in the game. Finally fixing that, making some various UI tweaks. And they're also making trophies be more viewable in the offline mode. This is currently coming out in the 4.00 firmware beta, codename Shinjin. And we don't have any release date when it'll come to the public, but it's coming very shortly, presumably. And I'm excited because while I still hate my uh, w Xbox One's UI the most, PS4 had some weird catching up to do. I finally picked out a tattoo that I want as someone who doesn't actually like tattoos all that much. It's a smart tattoo and it's temporary. Researchers from MIT's Media Labs and Microsoft's research team have created temporary smart tattoos which can act as input devices for your computer. They have one where they turned an entire wrist into a trackpad basically. They can transmit or share data via NFC as we've seen with the little injectable tags that people were doing. I bet they feel, feel pretty stupid for injecting themselves with something pretty much permanently that now is gonna come in the form of a temporary tattoo. If you're an enthusiast, that's what you do, I guess. Um, but it looks really, really cool. And then they also said that there's LEDs embeddable within the tattoo itself, which can make it glow like a little screen on your wrist, which really gets us into the sci-fi cyberpunk kind of era. And I'm excited to see what they do with it. It hasn't been officially presented yet. We just have some like tech demo videos, but it looks pretty promising and I'm fairly impressed. I'd be interested to see what the consumer level side of things ends up being if, if we ever see it at all. But that is the ultimate true wearable, I guess. HP rehauled their stream line of budget laptops and are putting out a new 11 inch, 14 inch, and 360 two in one laptop very shortly. The 11 inch will be uh, 199 starting price. The 14 inch will start at 219. Uh, the 11 coming at the end of August, the 14 coming mid-September, and then at some vague point in September, the Stream X360 2-in-1 will start shipping for $249. Now, these are their super budget baseline products. They're basically Chromebooks running Windows 10, and I'm sure they'll do a couple models of them as Chromebooks, but super basic. Celeron processor, 4 gigs of RAM, the eMMC storage, which isn't the fastest, but it's just got a basic 32 gigabyte storage. Nothing too crazy, but they did finally upgrade it with wireless AC connectivity. I don't know why that wasn't in there a couple generations ago, but hey, it's finally in there. And the screens are still 1366 by 768, so I'm sorry. But for super budget basic laptops, these are really good options. And I did love my HP 14 inch Chromebook that I had. It wasn't a stream, but it was along that same line of product and it served me very well for quite a few years so not too bad they will like i said they'll start running out end of august mid-september start seeing those and nice laptop for budget users lastly facebook is taking on ad blockers or they tried and seemed to have failed they put out a big statement saying that they're fighting against ad blockers and blah 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 i saw this after i noticed that in my feed i kept getting posts for a company called save honey which is basically like a Chrome extension that automatically finds coupons for you. I kept seeing the same, like they had three different posts that would alternate that just had like news articles or probably fake news headlines about how great their Chrome extension was, how it magically saved everyone money. I kept seeing the same one over and over to the extent that I actually reported it to Facebook. I was like, please don't show me this. And one of the options was, I, I, I've seen this too many times. Kind of a problem. Um, but apparently that's their new way of combating ad blockers is they're tired of ad blockers restricting their revenue So they're doing essentially sponsored posts mid timeline as Instagram started doing and snapchat started doing But then adblock plus like a week later wrote out a new filter that basically filters those out So get wrecked Facebook now This is funny to laugh at and this is it'll be funny to see them go back and forth for a little while because I'm sure they're there will always be ad blockers that find a way to do it unless Facebook wants to restrict access to their site if you have an ad blocker, which would be really, really silly and hurt them more than it would help them, which is why YouTube's never done it. 
Uh, but it could also cause many problems for us in the future if they can, like essentially if this back and forth, ar forth arms race advances the ad placement and ad blocking technology back and forth so much, it could cause a lot of problems for those of us who just liked Facebook as it was. So it's funny to look at, but also could be problematic in the future. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Tech Tuesday, your weekly tech news show by myself, Adam Eples, Adam or Eples Fox. Check out the full post link up on tetraninja.com, link in the description below. Check that out, do me a big favor there. And if you enjoyed, be sure to smash the like button, get subscribed for more awesome tech videos. Come check out, I just posted yesterday a very important video about how you can keep yourself safe and secure as an online presence if you're a YouTuber, a streamer, a podcaster, or just someone who doesn't want people to be able to swat you or come hijack your social media or something like that. I've got some good tips for you there. Fairly important video given how many YouTube channels have gotten hacked recently. It's not like magic, like I don't have some magic solution for you, but it's some really important like checklist of things that you need to make sure you're doing that most people probably aren't. Otherwise, if you wanna help support this content and get early access to videos, come check out our Patreon where we're trying to get a bigger push there. We've got a couple new patrons, Leonor and uh, 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 I forgot the other guy. I apologize. I, it, RobertMcNamara.com, I believe it was. It was. I knew it had a .com in it and a McNamara. We got a couple new patrons here. It's not gonna let me pull them up because I'm in there, but I do appreciate you guys. And then we had Angel who who joined in like right as I relaunched it. I appreciate you so much. We're up in the three, twelve dollars. We've got one seven dollar donator and a couple three dollars and we're getting along there. So if you wanna help contribute free educational tech content, let me know. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video.